Uh, the mission of the Tenants Union is to create housing justice through empowerment-based education, leadership development, outreach, organizing, and advocacy. Founded in 1977, the Tenants Union carries on a proud legacy to work to create concrete improvement communities. The Tenants Union embraces the values of equality, hope, tenant leadership, respect, direct action, civic courage, racial and economic justice, and self-determination. Is actually a self-help document unless you have an attorney. Most t most tenants in Spokane, um, you know, it's hard enough to pay the rent, so it's hard <laughs> to find an attorney that um, it, if they could pay for it. There's only two attorneys that I know of that represent tenants for free, so we're very short in that area. So it's really up to the tenants to advocate for themselves, and so we provide them. Our website, if you go to www.tenantunion.org, we have a lot of information that we refer tenants to. Uh, we have sample letters, letters to request repairs. 47% um, of Spokane residents rent their homes. Mm -hmm. That's really high compared to the national average. 54% pay more than 30% of their monthly income on rent. Mm -hmm. 30 per, more than 30 percent the federal government has established is considered red burden. Right. Mm -hmm. And many of those folks that are paying more than 30 percent are actually paying closer to 50 and 60 percent. 70 and 80 percent. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. means they don't have money left over for health insurance. Mm -hmm. For food. Their rate for rentals in Spokane right now is less than 1 percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that is for any rental, whether it's in their price range or not. Mm -hmm. Vouchers, the housing authority put out, they have 5,059 vouchers. 2017 data hasn't come out yet, so I don't know for the full year. The cost of those vouchers to the housing authority ranged between $317 and $550 a month. That is, per month, over $2 million in rent that the housing authority is trying to help subsidize. Mm. It's here? here in Spokane, the staggering statistic to me is that one in four people who qualify, they've gone through all the steps, they filled out all the paperwork, they qualify for the housing, one in four will get a voucher. 75% of them will not get any assistance. Uh, in Lurder reported that rent has gone up 38% in Spokane. Mm -hmm. So think about that. You're paying over 30% mm -hmm. of your monthly income on rent already, and you get a rent increase, and we have a vacancy rate of below 1%. Where are you going to go? Mm -hmm. If a tenant repeatedly asks for repairs, they are very much at risk for being delivered a 20-day notice because the landlord can lose somebody in who isn't going to complain about the repairs. So mm -hmm. we think that at just cause, it doesn't mean a landlord cannot evict a tenant. What it means is a landlord has to give notice, give you a reason. Uh, we also believe that there's a lot of fair housing violations that are hidden behind um, the 20-day notice because under the Fair Housing Act of 1968, which we're celebrating its 50th anniversary mm -hmm. this year, um, you cannot prohibit discrimination based on race, uh, national origin, religion are prohibited. But if you give somebody a 20-day notice and don't have to tell them why, it's, it's very difficult for somebody who's claiming a discrimination um, to actually prove it. Uh, so for those reasons, we think just cause eviction is our number one policy. If you'll see on... Essentially, the, the bottom line on this is a landlord can no longer say, you have a voucher, I'm not accepting you, I don't want to see your application, and they can't advertise and say, don't accept uh, vouchers. Okay, uh, my name is Ron Tostin. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that because it's true. Mm -hmm. um, I brought my life to the ground in, in 2013, and uh, a friend called and said, Ron, well, if you really want to get sober, you got to come to Spokane. Mm -hmm. So I quit my job at the Boy Company, which I was homeless at the time, full time job at Boy. Um, and came here, seeking to get sober. Uh, after two months, I was told that I'm supposed to stay here. I didn't know what that meant. I spoke with a couple people. They signed me up for welfare and signed me up for Section 8. I was picked number seven in the lottery of September 2014, and I have been on Section 8 since. Um, I called Section 8 and they made my rent zero. It has been as high as 200 and as low as zero, and so mm -hmm. that enabled me to continue. I'm a full-time student at Whitworth. I've been there almost two years. I graduate in May. With our, I started working um, as an assistant manager for operations with the Catholic Charities. Um, 
and it'll be six months. They give you six months before you uh, uh, are off Section 8. This is, they make sure that you stay out of town, and then you have to pay your full rent, which I will be glad to pay. I've been, I've been able to pay back by working or volunteering in, in, in the society uh, over the last three and a half years. Uh, as I said, I'm, a, I'm just starting my second term for the Human Rights Commission, another three years. I've been on the Tennessee Union for a year and a half. I've been a freelance writer for the Black Lids News for almost two years. And so I've been doing stuff in the community without pay, but that's been my way of paying back, you know, for the things that have been granted. House Bill 2578, that would make the source of discri income discrimination a statewide law, mm -hmm. which means not just Spokane, and it's the city of Spokane only right now. The Valley has no determination. The county. Those laws don't apply. It's only the city of Spokane and two or three other cities in the state who have said we want to enact this. So the statewide policy would be a huge help because that way it could help to unify every landlord, no matter where they are, no matter where their house is in the state of Washington, would have the same laws apply. Mm -hmm. It allows a landlord to say, a person who rented my apartment using a voucher did damages. Mm -hmm. Because that was their number one complaint. Mm -hmm. They said, I don't want to take poor people because they're going to damage my place and I have to put so much money back into getting it repaired. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, we'll set up a fund. If a person on a voucher damages your place, you get the repairs done, send us the bill up to $5,000 per unit per voucher. Mm -hmm. So every incident, I mean, if you're doing it to 10 different units, you can do it $5,000 10 <coughs> times, mm -hmm. can be reimbursed. Mm -hmm. 